All right, guys, fall time. Uh, everybody's favorite time to fish for smallmouths, and for good reason. Um, they're putting on the feed for getting ready for the long winter we got coming, and uh, it's a great time of year to be out fishing. We just wrapped up a bunch of tournaments over the last month and a half or so. It's, uh, you know, fun. It's my favorite time of year to fish the tournaments because you can catch fish a lot of different ways, shallower, deeper. As you get kind of later into the fall, which we're, we're getting to that point now a little bit. You can see them bundled up a little bit more than, than we were a couple weeks ago. Um, you want to start to focus more of your effort fishing out deeper, using minnow baits. Uh, a lot of the fish now that eat crayfish, you know, all summer, uh, perch, they're really going to be keyed in on eating ciscos and smelt. Those are the kind of the two primary bait fish. And, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go out today. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite baits for catching these minnow-eating smallmouths in the fall. Um, it's fun fishing, um, always pretty good action, and you can catch some of the biggest ones of the year. One of the you know best ways to catch bass when they're out in deep water in the fall, you know, in northwestern Ontario, is an umbrella rig like this Alabama rig. Um, so basically, we're gonna load this thing up with some. Z-Man swim baits. These are four inch diesel minnows. So you get five to a pack, which that's what I want for this bait. I want five, five baits. Sometimes we'll put, you know, a different colored one in the middle, a bigger, bigger size maybe. Um, and, uh, and, the, and often the different one will get bit, but just for fishing's pretty good right now. And uh, just five of these straight up is gonna be fine comes to the jig heads obviously you know you can use the the smeltinator um, you know minnow style jig heads uh, but I pretty much just use a, a regular ball head I put I'm putting I like to my rig to be heavy so it gets down deep fast and sort of stays down there so I actually run two three eighths heads on the bottom and three quarters on the top but if you're you know shallower than 20 feet I might go to eighth ounces on the top but I like a couple heavy ones on the bottom just to act as a keel weight uh, in Ontario we can use four hooks on these rigs so what I'm gonna do is once I have all these baits sort of on here I'm gonna set them up get them rigged up and then I'm actually gonna go back and glue all these baits to the to the jig and then I can catch a pile of fish on this rig. Like the whole rig will break before I need to put new baits on again. These Elaztec swim baits are, are top notch. They catch fish and they're obviously like very durable. So, um, but I'm gonna cut one of the hooks off one of the top arms. So I actually have four baits on here with hooks and then one dummy bait. Uh, I'll show you how, how I do that. So now that I've got all my baits on there, I'm actually gonna just go take some side cutters and I'm gonna snip that hook off on one of these top ones. There we go. And so there, now we got four hooks and we're legal. Um, but that's, that's the rig. And then like I said, we're gonna go back and glue, glue all these baits to the jigs and they stay on there nice and uh, that's what you, that's gonna, you can just, like I say, catch fish till you wear the whole thing right out pretty much, so. As far as the rod and reel go for throwing the rig, you want something heavy. I mean, that's a big, big contraption that you're tossing. Um, this is an old NRX. It's actually an umbrella rig rod. It's, it's designed for fishing them. It's a 7.7 heavy, um, but the NRX rod, super light. Um, they don't make this one in the NRX Plus lineup, but you can use the four or five power um, 894. That's gonna be, a, that's a really good rod. Or go up to like a 7.6, 711 flip and stick. Some of the GLXs, GCXs, and uh, you know, you just want something that's kind of heavier to makes life a lot easier for throwing these baits around. Um, line, I use 20 or 22 pound fluorocarbon. I just been using Seaguar. Um, a Brazex, good stuff. Um, that's a 300 size Corrado, so a little bit bigger reel. Just handles that big spool. I can cast this thing a long ways with, you know, I got, can get a lot of line on the spool um, of the heavy stuff. And then it's got a little bit bigger handle, so it just makes cranking them a little bit easier. But that's the setup. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss it out here and I'll talk about it a little bit more, but you, you know, let it get down to the bottom. 
Um, that's why I have these heavier jigs on there. You don't want to just cast it out, close your bail and start reeling it in or it's just going to stay too high up. You want it to get down there and I mean the thing looks like a school of minnows going through the water. It looks pretty cool. Um, and uh, I mean it's it's natural and it catches them. So every once in a while you get you can get a double on there, get a couple at a time and it's pretty fun. fun try that again I'm in spot lock right now so, oh I got hit there so I'm not actually uh, tracking my bait but um, sort of the target lock would be nice but uh, but you kind of get a feel for where you know you don't want it to be right riding the bottom but I want the bait generally you know most places we have fairly clear water so you want the bait I don't know, four or five, six feet above the bottom is generally where I want it to kind of go over them. And again, make them come up for it a little bit. But, but when you let it sink, like I'm constantly opening the spool, let it sink on slack lines. So you make that long cast, you want to be able to like retrieve it for the whole cast. If you cast it out in this, you know, 20, 30 feet of water, and then you just close the bale and it, it's going to be halfway back to the boat before it finally gets down near the bottom. So let it sink and then it's just slow, just like this, just slow. A lot slower than you think. Like with all those blades and stuff on there, I mean, that, that thing wants to lift if you reel it too fast. So, and then, you know, every once in a while you can start speeding up, let it fall. Um, but however, you know, the thing just looks like a school of minnows going through the water and um, pretty, pretty tough to beat. Oh, look at this, guys. This is cool. <laughs> That's a big ass Cisco that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, right here, this is this is what we're trying to imitate. My baits are tiny, but that bass, that big bass I just caught, look at that, but it puked and spit out. So that's a regurgitated Cisco. That's almost like big, as big as the ones we use for pike fishing in the winter. Um, so, you know, they don't eat a lot during the winter. So they're putting on the feed bag right now. They want to bulk up and, and, you know, store as much energy as they can to kind of get them through the winter. But that's it right there, man. That's what they're eating. You never think of it when you hook, you know, you, when you hook one on that, it's always exciting. Like, oh, it's probably a big one, but you're really on all you, the way. <laughs> if you like, you know, and you, you know, sometimes you get doing it and you, you're, you're you're cool. Oh, it's got zipped. All right, I just felt a little tick. Went to set the hook. Nothing there. So um, we got piked. Um, as far as the setup goes, um, using you want to use a fairly stiff, heavier rod for these spoons just to be able to, um, you know, really rip it and you know get that thing moving the way you want it to. Um, so that's a seven six. Um, 904 uh, G Loomis Conquest rod, pretty heavy rod. I actually use it for flipping, light flipping stuff as well. Uh, Metanium reel, 40 pound Power Pro, and then I'm putting a 20 pound floral leader on. Um, I got a clear link to the bait then, and the, the fluorocarbon's a little bit stiffer, so it doesn't seem to get stuck or hung up as much. Um, as far as my spoon box goes, this is the ones, you know, that's one of the bigger flutter spoons that we use down south for large mouse. I've got one that I carry around with me. Never had the balls to use it yet around here, but uh, you can see I've got a variety of sizes in here, but the, the, the kind of five inch one is probably my favorite. Um, I've been using a white one, but we're gonna try a chrome now. That's just the tail that I actually made for that one. Um, the, if, it, it's fairly windy right now, so I'm not using them, but 
This is one that Bagley makes. It's a little bit lighter, but it's a it's a nice little f smaller profile flutter spoon as well. And sometimes if they're eating smaller baits, um, I've had some really good days on that one as well, but nice, nice little bit smaller spoon. But yeah, these are all really good minnow imitators and that's what they want to eat this time of year. So they work. just when it was sinking I just saw my line jump <laughs> pretty cool you know growing up as a kid you you uh, I caught all kinds of pike a daredevil was my favorite lure when I was like eight years old because it was so good for catching pike but man not a giant bass but it's pretty fun catching them on that spoon um, caught a lot of big large mouths on it down south but um, it's always part of my arsenal, you know, up north as well, especially in the fall. I, I casted that thing farther than I normally would. Um, you know, usually when you when you can get around where the fish are, and I'll see them. I got some actually under the boat again here. Put a waypoint there. There's actually one boulder that they're kind of hanging around. Um, but usually I like to make kind of a half cast just so it gets down to the bottom a little bit better. You can have a little more control over it. But um, but that spoon will get down there. It's like an ounce and a quarter, I think. It'll get down there pretty quick. And then, you know, you let it hit the bottom. And it's all about making a reaction. I'm, I'm, I'm ripping that thing, you know, three or four feet up off the bottom. And then it just flutters back down. And I kind of follow it down when it's going back, um, you know, watch the line. I like to let it sink kind of on slack line and then it, it flutters a lot more. If you keep it tight, it just sort of falls a little bit um, straighter, but it'll get their attention. And uh, like I say, sometimes be the deal to catch a couple big ones. So I've got, I can see a couple flickering around down there. up there. Ooh, nice and loose. What do we got? Ooh, nice bass. Gotta love the fall bass fishing. If it's a tournament, I never just drop down and catch these things like this. Big ones, quick. But, <laughs> that's cool, man. I'm actually just pulling up to the spot to a little hump and I hadn't I haven't even got to it yet I just was pulling rods out saw a couple under the boat and dropped the the deadly rig down there the old jig and jerk shad um, and there was a little pack of nice bass obviously so that's cool they get so fattened up in the fall and uh, it's prime time to be uh, getting after them so we're dropping this minnow down and this is going to take not very long. Oh, we got a little denial there. I was going down to the bottom and I'm, I'm in 24 feet. My bait was down like 10 feet and one started shooting up for it. So I stopped it at like 50 and I got it up pretty high. And uh, okay, we got a couple coming on now. Once we get a, a few of them and there's some competition, we should be golden. There we go. So that was just right here. Oh, walleye. Huh. Not a bass. One thing that, um, so I just, I just got denied by several fish. I get my bait in, see where my knot is. It's pointed forward, no good. So that's gonna make the bait kind of sit like that in the water, not natural. So um, you wanna make sure that that knot is vertical and that's going to help the, the the bait sort of sit natural horizontal in the water right here so i'm gonna drop the minnow down to them and see if we can get one to get mad at it here they come oh man oh put slack 
blocking it. <laughs> That's a nice one. Okay, cool. Just always got to have the little, the meadow there for a little follow up, you know. They were really all over that spoon. I had six or eight of them chasing it. Um, I think I had one hit it, but didn't didn't hook them up. So, but it you know, it showed them to me. There's still a bunch right here. We'll see if we can get another one of them to bite. Sometimes on these deeper ones, when you let let one go down into the group, they don't uh, they smarten up kind of quick. But we'll see here if we can get another one to, to go. Okay, we got a looker. Yep, he was mad at it. <laughs> oh man, this feels like a nice one. It's just so fun this time of year, and man, it's just a long winter, so you want to get out here and just, especially when you get a nice day like this, take advantage of, uh, of these things. Come here. I could probably boat flip this one, but he's chunky. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cool? You get them vertical like that too. You just about always hook them in the top. They're hooked good. And uh, man, awesome fish. It's a long winter, so you want to, you know, take advantage of catching these things every day that you can. And um, like I say, they bite good in the fall, so lots of fun. All right, guys, that wraps up our fall smallmouth bonanza here. Um, you know, I said it a m bunch of times already, but just just great to be outside this time of year. We got a long winter coming up, so get out there, um, catch as many as you can because we got some serious ice and snow coming for the next few months. But those were some of my favorite baits for fall fishing. Check them out at sportsheadquarters.ca.